federal judge has sentenced the president's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, to three and a half additional years in prison. That's on top of the roughly four-year sentence he received in a separate case last week. Manafort pleaded guilty to two conspiracy charges. The judge noted that Manafort consistently gave false testimony about his interactions with a Russian political consultant with ties to Russian intelligence agencies. Now, former assistant U.S. attorney David Weinstein from the Hinshaw Law Firm here in South Florida joins us. And David, some people think that Paul Manafort got off easy, not surprisingly. His attorney doesn't agree. Let's l listen to what the attorney said. I think the judge showed that she is incredibly hostile towards Mr. Manafort and exhibited a level of callousness that I have not seen in a white collar case in over 15 years of prosecution. So do you find anything odd about this reaction, or is this a pretty common reaction from an attorney in this type of a case? Well, he hasn't practiced down here in South Florida. <laughs> uh, the judges are frequently not happy with what white-collar defendants do. And in this instance, I don't think the judge was any harsher with Manafort for what he did, the crimes he committed, the way he tried to downplay what he had done, his attempt to show remorse, any more so than any other judge would have done with a white-collar defendant. He certainly wasn't treated as nicely as he was by Judge Ellis last week. I'll give him that. Do you think he got off easy in this case? Well, I'm a little surprised that it didn't get closer to the 10 years that she could have imposed on him. He cut himself a really good deal in retrospect by pleading guilty in this case and capping his exposure at 10 years, not knowing what Ellis would do. He set him up for a situation where he could receive a sentence that was not as significant as it could have been. So a lot of people talking about Manafort's relationship with President Trump and the possibility that maybe the president could pardon him down the road, but now he's facing additional charges in New York, state charges, and he could have more charges coming uh, down from the state. Why is this significant? Well, that's his bigger problem. The president can pardon him for federal crimes. That's within his jurisdiction, and he's entitled to do that whenever he wants to do it. However, the state charges, separate sovereign, separate laws, no double jeopardy attaches there. So he's got to go face some music there, and he has to decide when he wants to do it. He's in federal custody right now, and so he's getting credit for every day he's in federal custody. If he decides it's time to go take himself to New York, he'll be put in state custody. He'll no longer be in federal custody until the case is over. At that point, he's not going to get any credit for any federal time that he's serving. So he could end up doing much longer than the 73 months, depending upon when he puts himself into the state system. Right. Do you think he's still a reliable source of information? Not at this point. He, you know, he certainly had a number of judges doubt his credibility, doubt his ability to show remorse. Uh, look, when we're putting cases together, we get the witnesses as they come to us, and some witnesses tell the truth, others don't. Uh, he's been shown not to necessarily be as truthful or as candid as other witnesses have in the past. All right, David, thank you for your analysis. You're welcome. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks a lot, David.